Hello everyone, today we are going to look at multicollinearity and feature selection in a data model from our ongoing data project from DoorDash. If you haven't watched our previous videos, we'll leave the links down in the description box. Let's do a quick recap. The goal of this take-home assignment is to build a model to predict the estimated time taken for delivery. It is defined as the duration between the order creation time and the actual order delivery time. In the previous videos, we've created predictive features and prepared the data for modeling, remove redundant features and collinearity. Now let's begin with the next part, which is removing multicollinearity. Let's get started. Since we resolved the collinearity issue, it's time to check the multicollinearity. When multiple variables are correlated with each other, that causes multicollinearity. That makes it harder to interpret your model and may cause other problems like overfitting. To do that, we will use a VIF or variance inflation factor. We will remove the features that have a VIF score of over 20. And uh, the VIF factor detects the multicollinearity in your regression analysis. It will give you the score by measuring how much your regression analysis is affected by collinearity. Now let's load the VIF factor. Okay, now it's time to define another custom function. This function will compute the VIF score. We will use our features and VIF method that we import, and then we will sort values. It creates two different columns. These columns contain our feature names and our VIF score. This score will help you to eliminate the values that might cause multicollinearity in your regression analysis. Now it's time to apply this function to all columns of our data set. And after that, let's see the data. Okay, here's the output. So we are going to drop the features that have over 20 VIF score. And it looks like a person distinct item of total is the only feature that's above 20. So let's drop that. And for that, we will use while loop and then add the data to the selected features and return the data set again. So we're removing person distinct item of total and this might take a while. All right, now we've deleted person distinct item of total from our data model. So both collinearity and multicollinearity processes can be increased due to your project needs. So you can continue finding both and removing columns but now it's time to do feature selection. So why do we do feature selection? Feature selection works to reduce the dimension of a data set and getting rid of the features that do not have a significant effect on the model. Also, it helps our algorithm to work faster. One way to do that is by using PCA and random forest regression methods. First, let's apply random forest regression to our model and find the Gini's importance. Random Forest gives us a chance of measuring the importance of our feature by using Gini's importance. Gini's importance calculates the feature's importance across all splits that random forest regressors do. So let's select our variables from our dataset and split them into train and test. After that, now it's time to apply random forest regression to the model and find the Gini's importance. First, we will save our feature names, then we will define and fit random forest regressor, and then we will match the feature and importance by zip function in our for loop. Then let's sort our values by their Gini's importance in ascending order and to see visually draw a graph. And here is the graph. Okay, what are the top ones? So the graph shows Busy Dash's ratio, total outstanding orders, and average price are important features for our model. And also many of our features have a slight effect on our model. So let's draw a graph of 35 features which have uh, the highest Gini's importance. So these are the features, the categories, Busy Dash's ratio, price range of items, average price at per item, and estimated storage to consumer driving duration. Okay, so second, let's use another way to diminish our features because we already have over, um, no, not over 80 different features 
and there should be room for improvements. So PCA is another dimension reduction technique for regression tasks. Also, it is effective to eliminate multicollinearity too. By using PCA, we can analyze how many features we have to use uh, to explain any percentage of our data. In other words, PCA helps us to find an optimum number of features to represent our data set. So now let's import the libraries. And first we will fit and transform the standard scalar and then PCA. To interpret the results, we will draw a graph. Now the results tells us that by using 60% of the features, the data set can be explained by 80%. So we already have 80 features. We can continue with the scalar. So it's time to continue feature scaling, but this time by actually scaling. A good question to ask at this point is why are we using a scalar? Well, developing a model to make further interpretation Scaling is important since it will be hard to compare uh, the different scaled features. And also some optimization algorithms like gradient descent works better after scaling. So when the values of the features are close, that will be good for the model. Now let's see two different methods of scaling. We'll use standard scalar and min max scalar. Let's start with standard scalar. So to calculate standard scalar, first we will subtract the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. That might look complex, yet uh, the logic behind it is really simple. The aim is to make the mean zero. That's how our model performs best. And min-max scalar, is often called normalization, which will scale our features between zero and one by subtracting minimum and dividing it by the difference between maximum and minimum. Now let's import min-max scalar and standard scalar. Here we will define a custom scalar for both X and Y, and then we will transform and reshape both. When we rename the scalar as min-max, this function will apply the min-max scalar to our features. Here's an example of using that function with min-max scalar. After applying the scalar, our feature scale has changed and so have our predictions. To make a valid interpretation, we have to inverse this process back. First, we will inverse transform to our y predict, and then we will calculate the root mean square error and print it with the model name. And of course, the scalar and the model name should be defined. Later, we will use that function to calculate the different models and scalar RMSC. That evaluation metric differs according to your project needs. We select RMSC and RMSC shows the distance between our predictions and real values. So there we have it. We've eliminated multicollinearity and performed feature selection to reduce the dimension of the dataset and we got rid of the insignificant features of the model. And finally, we've performed feature scaling using standard and min-max scaling. In the next video, we will perform classical machine learning techniques to find the best performance model to our problem. So stay tuned for that and see you in the next video.